Watch Guard Capital. Invest your time wisely. In this video, I cover how government trust funds work, or more appropriately, don't work. It's part of a series on what the government would have to do to balance the budget in order to start paying down national debt. Share and subscribe if you support this cause. This is the financial report for the United States government for fiscal year 2018. On page one, you'll find a snapshot of operations, which shows we had a negative net operating cost of $1,159,000,000, meaning we were short about $1.2 trillion in tax revenue to cover our expected obligations. But our budget or spending deficit, which is what you will see discussed in the media, was about $779 billion. What accounts for the $380 billion difference? Let's say you make $34,000, but you spend $45,000. You know that you have future expenses that you should be preparing for now, such as retirement, by making regular deposits or contributions to an account, but you don't because you don't have room in your budget. These costs are incurred but not necessarily paid, and the U.S. had $380 billion of those expenses in 2018, incurred but omitted for now. In 2018, $282 billion needed to be placed in a federal employee and veteran benefit trust to pay for future benefits like retirement and health care and $112 billion needed to be placed in an environmental disposal trust to pay for future pollution cleanup efforts. As we were already operating on a budget deficit for current expenses, these deposits of $380 billion for future expenses were not made. Now this process has been happening for some time now, and the total amount that should have been deposited over the years but wasn't is just shy of $8 trillion for just the federal employee and veteran benefit trust. $2.5 trillion in missed payments for federal employees and $5.5 trillion for veterans, covering pension, burial benefits, health, education, and life insurance benefits. The $112 billion omitted payment for the Environmental and Disposal Trust brings up the total balance payable to $577 billion that will either have to be addressed with future taxes or abandoned. Here's an account statement for all the public trusts that have received deposits as of September 30, 2018, totaling $5.8 trillion. $2.8 trillion in the Social Security Trust Fund, $923 billion in the OPM or Federal Employee Retirement Fund, $983 billion in the Department of Defense Retirement and Healthcare Funds, $301 billion in the Medicare Hospital and Insurance Trust Funds, and about $800 billion in all the other trust funds. Which means at least we have some savings or funds for future expenses, right? Well, not exactly. According to Note 20, page 128 of the 2018 Financial Report of the United States, the government does not set aside assets to pay future benefits or other expenditures associated with funds from dedicated collections. Intergovernmental transfers are so abstract that I actually paused the creation of this video to make a separate video dedicated to explaining how the unified budget works called Myself IOUs. It might not be a bad idea to pause this video and watch that video if this is your first exposure to the management and structure of government trust funds. But basically, when those securities are redeemed, for example, to pay Social Security benefits, the government will need to obtain the resources necessary to reimburse the trust funds. So whether it's a placeholder for $8 trillion in unfunded liabilities because of mispayments in the past, a placeholder for $6 trillion in government trust fund assets that were deposited in the past but transferred out to cover other expenses, or a $17 trillion placeholder for debt held by the public that was used to pay past interest charges and deficit spending, all these placeholders are relatively in the same position and will only be repaid if the government can collect enough future taxes, borrow from somebody, or borrow from some future generation of somebody's. On the U.S. Treasury Direct website, you can see monthly reports for all the government trust funds, which are similar to your monthly bank statements. These reports really highlight the current fiscal situation of the United States. These two trust funds are Medicare, and if you open them up, you'll find these tables. If we follow the guidance on page 20 of the U.S. Financial Report, which states that because these are both liabilities of the Treasury and assets of the government trust funds, they are eliminated as part of the consolidation process, and we eliminate them as resources available to beneficiaries, We'll find that the U.S. government owes $3.3 billion in interest on $270 billion in Treasury bonds to the Medicare trust funds, and the funds have $84 million in cash to cover expenses, about $1.41 per citizen who received Medicare benefits in 2018, enough to cover a few aspirin. This is the Social Security trust fund, and if we go to the same table and eliminate the $2.7 trillion in special issued Treasury bonds that can only be redeemed by borrowing from the public or with current taxes, we see that the government owes $31 billion in interest to the fund for borrowing the previous surpluses to cover general deficit spending. And there is only $70,000 in cash in the Social Security Trust Fund that paid 64 million Americans an average benefit of $1,471 in 2019, enough to pay four of them for the entire year. These are the highway and airport and airway trust funds. There is $1.2 million in the highway fund and $362 in the airport fund enough to repave one mile of highway and change a few runway light bulbs. But it could be worse. 
Both the Leaking Underground Storage Tank Fund and the Vaccine Injury Compensation Fund have a zero fund balance with the Treasury. The Oil Spill Liability Fund is overdrawn by $7.2 million. The Hazardous Substance Super Fund is overdrawn by $21.3 million. And the Gulf Coast Restoration Fund is overdrawn by a $1 billion. Thus, if we ever truly wanted to balance the budget, we probably need to look at how we manage our checkbook and optimize our trust funds for peak efficiency. There are hundreds of funds, but we're going to use the Social Security Fund to represent how this would work because it's the largest. If you turn to pages 159 and 160 of the 2019 Annual Report for Social Security and Disability Insurance, you'll find the Combined Operations Report for the Trust from 1957 through 2018. 62 years worth of total income collected from payroll taxes, general fund reimbursements, taxes on Social Security, which only began in 1984, and the net interest collected off the special issue treasury bonds in the fund that were purchased with all the excess revenue and tax receipts. In the same report, you'll find the total annual cost of Social Security that include benefit payments and administrative costs. In 2018, total revenue was just north of $1 trillion and $3 billion. Total costs were $1 trillion, so the fund increased by $3 billion to $2 trillion, $894 billion, $900 million in special issued treasury bonds that will have to be repaid with future taxes. The last attempt by Congress to fix Social Security solvency issues were in 1983 during the Reagan administration. Many amendments to the program were made, but the basic theme was to increase Social Security tax rates and reduce Social Security benefits, which were necessary to address the short-term issues. As for the long term, here's a quote from the Social Security Administration. In the period following the 1983 amendments, the Social Security program has run annual surpluses. That is, payroll tax and other revenues exceeded benefit payments and administration cost. And a sizable $2.9 trillion in 2018 and growing trust fund has materialized. The surpluses are invested and the trust fund holds special issued treasury bonds. Echoing some of the debate in the early years of the program, considerable discussion has centered on whether the government truly saves the current Social Security surpluses. But what if we would remove this debate by investing a portion of the annual surpluses in something besides non-special issue treasury bonds starting after 1983? Here's the information for 1984 to 2018 from the 2019 Annual Report for Social Security and Disability and Insurance Trust Funds. During this time, the funds collected $17.4 trillion in payroll taxes, $241 billion in general fund reimbursements, $509 billion in tax revenue on Social Security benefits, and had total cost of $17.5 trillion. If we hold this information constant and pull this information forward to this table, total costs are unchanged at $17.5 trillion, total revenue from these three sources is unchanged at $18.1 trillion. In the first scenario, nothing or 0% will be contributed to a second companion trust that will allow for the investment in the S&P 500 stock market. If the table is coded correctly, the calculated results will match what happened in real life over this time period. Social Security paid $2 trillion, $207 billion, $300 million in interest from 1984 to 2018. The calculated results estimated $2 trillion, $207 billion, $616 million, a difference of $316 million, or 0.014%, which can be attributed to rounding error in the provided data set from the 2019 Annual Social Security Report. The 2018 Ending Trust Fund Balance, which is a liability that will have to be paid with future taxes, was $2,894,900,000,000. The calculator results were $2,895,716,000,000, a difference of 816000000 or about 0.028%. These numbers are very close and, if anything, start the optimized strategy out at a disadvantage of negative $1,133,000,000. As expected, since nothing is contributed to a companion trust, the Social Security Fund has no other assets besides special issued treasury bonds, so there's no change here, which means no savings were exposed to the stock market to depreciate in 2018 or appreciate in 2019. In the second scenario, a conservative 25% of the available annual surplus will be contributed to a second companion trust that will allow for investment in the S&P 500 stock market. 75% of the available surplus will still be contributed to the current strategy, earning the same effective yields it actually did over this time period. Because there are 25% less special issued treasury bonds being purchased annually, the ending current strategy trust balance will be lower which is a future tax savings because it reduces future liabilities or obligations of the U.S. government to repay U.S. trust funds with future taxes. The total net interest earned by the current trust fund strategy will also reduce, since there are less bonds being purchased, and since the interest earned by special issue treasury bonds in trust funds is actually interest paid by the general fund out of collected tax receipts, this would be a current tax savings to the government. One last note. Whenever there's a shortfall in annual revenue to cover Social Security and disability cost, a pro rata amount of the current trust strategy and optimized trust strategy will be redeemed to cover the shortfall. 
So if both trusts had roughly equal market balances, roughly equal amounts would be taken from them to cover the shortfall. Contributing 25% of the available surplus to a second companion trust fund invested in the S&P 500 stock market index would have reduced the number of special issued treasury bonds from an ending balance of $2,894,000,000 to $1,590,000,000, a reduction in future tax obligations or tax savings of $1,304,000,000 and would have reduced taxes used to pay interest expenses during this period on special issue bonds from $2.2 trillion to $1.4 trillion in actual savings of $800 billion or $23 billion per year. Social Security would now have a second fund invested in the largest 500 companies in the U.S. with a market balance of $1 trillion billion that it does not have now, which would not require tax receipts to redeem. And in 2019, when the S&P 500 stock market index returned 28.88%, the Companion Trust would have appreciated by $465 billion, enough to cover over 26 million of the 64 million Americans collecting an average payment of $1,471 per month without using a single dollar of tax or borrowing with treasury bonds. Contributing 50% of the available surplus to the second companion trust would have reduced the number of special issued treasury bonds from an ending balance of $2,894,000,000 to roughly $816,000,000, a reduction in future tax obligations or tax savings of $2,078,000,000, and would have reduced taxes used to pay interest expense during this period on special issued bonds from $2.2 trillion to $800 billion, an actual saving of $1,390,000,000,000, $39.7 billion per year. Social Security would now have a second fund invested in the largest 500 companies in the U.S. with a market balance of $2,570,000,000 that it does not have now, which would not require tax receipts to redeem. And in 2019, when the S&P 500 stock market index returned 28.88%, the Companion Trust would have appreciated by $742 billion, enough to cover 74.2% of the 2018 $1 trillion in total cost, without using a single dollar of tax revenue that year. A contribution rate of 50% to an optimized fund is probably the most I could ever hope for, but it would be extremely justifiable to invest 75% in such a fund, given that hypothetically resources would be needed indefinitely, or as long as the United States and or Social Security was around. So if we would have put 75% of the available surpluses in a second companion trust invested in the S&P 500 stock market index, it would have reduced the number of special issued treasury bonds from an ending balance of $2,894,000,000 to roughly $335,000,000, a reduction in future tax obligations or tax savings of $2,559,000,000, and would have reduced taxes used to pay interest expenses during this period on special issued bonds from $2.2 trillion to $384 billion, an actual savings of $1,822,000,000 or $52,000,000,000 per year. Social Security would now have a second fund invested in the largest 500 companies in the United States with a market balance of $3,158,000,000,000, which it does not have now and would not require tax receipts to redeem. And in 2019, when the S&P 500 stock market index returned 28.88%, the Companion Trust would have appreciated by $912,000,000,000, about $133,000,000,000 more than the entire 2018 budget deficit. One last graphic to represent the potential risk and returns. Here are the actual returns for Social Security and the Disability Trust Fund Special Issued Treasury Bonds and the U.S. stock market side by side. Here are six potential portfolios that could be implemented. The three we discussed, 25, 50, and 75% stock, and three more, 10, 30, and 40% stocks. From 1984 to 2018, Social Security averaged 6.9% return thanks to high interest rates in the 80s, and the stock market averaged 9.4%. Thus, as expected, when we add stock exposure, the average return increases from 7.2 to 8.8% per year over the six strategies. The actual worst year for special issue treasury bonds was positive since they are not marked to market and was 2.9% in 2018. The worst year for the stock market was negative 38.5% in 2008 during the financial crisis. The 10% stock allocation strategy also never had a negative year. And the worst year for the other portfolios was between negative 5.7% and negative 27.6%. The next worst return year for Social Security was 3%, which was in 2017. And the next worst year for the stock market was 2002 during the tech bubble when it was down 23.4%. The six strategies had a second worst year between positive 2% and negative 15.9%. The best year for Social Security was 13.7% in 1984 and 34.1% for the stock market in 1995. The six strategies ranged between 13.1% and 27.6%.
The government creates special issued bonds for public trust funds that are not allowed to fluctuate in price, so it never had a negative return year. The stock market had eight down years. The six strategies had zero, two, four, five, and six negative years. The Social Security Report estimates the rate of return for the trust funds for the next decade between 2.7 and 3.4%. The sum of those 10 annual returns is 29.2%, just north of the 28.9% return the stock market achieved in 2019 alone. Okay, so now let's address your concerns. Concern number one, stock market risk. Absolutely. The trust balance would fluctuate more, but that's the point, because most of those fluctuations are in the right direction that would help Social Security. Accepting 2 to 3% returns when inflation is 2 to 3% is unacceptable. So we add stock market risk, but we also add stock market returns. We also add diversification, which is a good thing. We reduce interest rate risk, which is a good thing. We reduce longevity risk, which is where we outlive our fund assets, which would be a bad thing. And we reduce counterparty risk, which is, happens every time Social Security program details are changed, like taxing benefits, increasing payroll taxes, increasing the age you can collect. So I'll consider this a net positive. Concern number two. You are against privatization of Social Security. Me too, and this is not that. Privatization would be like handing the trust fund and all future contributions over to an insurance company and saying, here you go, provide lifetime income to all Americans. I'm sure any company would jump at that opportunity, which is probably why we shouldn't do it. What I'm saying is open a thrift savings plan-like account under the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, which both already exist, invest in the large company C fund and possibly the small company S fund, which both exist, and follow a detailed investment plan so that no one has to make any decisions. Just follow the plan. So again, this is not privatization. Concern number three, you are against government meddling in corporate governance and decision making. This is America, land of the free, and we don't want state-owned socialistic enterprises. Me either, because it would absolutely be misused in the future to bail out companies that took on too much risk. So let's mandate that only passive indexes can be purchased, and the government will not proxy vote on any shares indirectly owned through those indexes. The government will just be along for the returns, not to tell boards how to run their companies. It will be like an absentee ballot for the government. Only outstanding shares owned by private citizens or companies are allowed to vote, so there would be no corporate governance interference. Concern number four, I don't like this plan because it only supports large U.S. companies. I couldn't agree more. I only use the S&P 500 stock market index returns because most people are familiar with them. I absolutely support the idea of buying a total stock market index so that all U.S. companies could be included, not just the large ones. Okay, concern number five. You don't like this plan because it only supports companies traded on stock market exchanges. What about mom and pop shops, private firms, and the American dream for that matter? I agree. No problem. Let's take a portion of the surplus created by this plan and establish a more robust small business administration fund so that individuals have access to the capital to grow their futures. And all Americans can celebrate in each other's successes because the interest paid on those loans would come back to the trust funds. Americans helping Americans. It's a beautiful thing. Here's the current law on Social Security Trust Fund Investment. U.S. Code Title 42, The Public Health and Welfare, Chapter 7, Social Security, Subchapter 2, Federal Age, Survivors and Disability Insurance Benefits, Section 401, Trust Funds, Paragraph D, Investments. Change the words in red, and I'll let democracy choose the maximum stock exposure, and we are good to go to save billions upon trillions in taxes going forward. And if you have any other innovative ideas on how to fix Social Security, besides raise payroll taxes or cut benefits, please contact me. Also, if you have any other objections that I didn't quite address in this video, leave a comment or send me a message. This concludes trust fund optimization. In the next video, we're going to look at tax rates. And as always, if you need help with your affairs or want to optimize your own asset accounts, go to watchguardcapital.com and say hello, and we'll take it from there.